Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and this is a video about exploring ancient sites in Lake Titicaca. Lake Titicaca, half of it is in Peru, and half of it, of it uh, is in Bolivia. And right now, we're actually on the Bolivian side, but the first site that we're going to be visiting today is on the Peruvian side. So you can see the rugged nature of the hills and mountains surrounding Lake Titicaca. This is a high-speed hydrofoil that we took. And there is the Bolivian flag waving away as we go at high speed. So we're now at this ancient site uh, in Peru, on the Peruvian side, called Amaru Muru. And it's an ancient construction made out of red sandstone. So we have been here many times before. Uh, Amaru Muru means the portal of the snake, but it can also be called Aramu Muru, which supposedly relates it to the ancient continent of Mu and the survivors that actually f supposedly made it to Lake Titicaca and constructed this. As you can see, there's a central false door and then these high channels on the left and right hand sides. Now we've had people who were very good at energy dowsing in this location and the best of them said that the central portal is supposedly masculine energy and the left and right sides are feminine. And here you see this almost like belly button shape which is carved into the center of the portal in the center of the structure. Now you're looking at the landscape of Lake Titicaca and here is Amaru Muru once again. This is one of the channels that you can see carved into the red sandstone going up covered in bird droppings unfortunately. And the curious thing is no one, as far as I can tell, knows who constructed it. Some say the Inca, but it's not really an Inca-style construction at all. And the other possible candidate would be the Tiwanaku culture, but they, I don't think, were responsible. The local people don't know who made it, but actually the local people are afraid to go here at night because they say that balls of light come in and out of the central portal whether that's the case or not, I really don't know. I energetically don't pick up much of anything there, but it is quite a unique construction. And here as the sun goes down, you get another view once again of the, the um, inserts on the left and right and also the central doorway. It's used quite a bit for modern day ceremony by, I guess, new age people. And it's a, a must-see if you're in Peru. It's about two hours drive south of Puno, <clears throat> which is a major city on Lake, or at Lake Titicaca. Okay, we've now moved to the Island of the Moon in Lake Titicaca. This is on the Bolivian side, and this is an Inca construction. This was the home of the Virgins of the Sun of the Inca civilization. And you can see all of the terracing, almost the entire island was created or was made into terraces during the Inca time period, very little of which is still being used to this day. And now we get a, a nice quadcopter view flying over our October group. There again in the background you see lots of terracing and the adobe and rough stone construction of this temple of the Virgins of the Sun. So this is regarded by local people as being a feminine island whereas the island of the Sun which is very close by and is much much bigger is regarded as being masculine. So this part of the structure has been rebuilt by archaeologists in recent times. 
And again, a site well worth visiting if you happen to be in the area of Lake Titicaca. The only way to get there, of course, is by boat. And we took a hydrofoil from the Copacabana area. And finally, a view of the massiveness of Lake Titicaca, the highest navigable lake in the world. And unfortunately, you can't see the Andes, but they are behind those clouds. So on a sunny day, you can see the Andes, especially on the Bolivian side. Now we're on the Island of the Sun. And as the quadcopter goes up, we're going to be looking at another Inca construction. This is a sun temple. Whether it actually was a sun temple or not, I'm not sure, but anything which is uh, Inca related is <clears throat> tends to be called either a sun temple or a moon temple. Again, you can see that the construction technique, uh, technique is quite crude. And now one of the strangest places in the Lake Titicaca area, slightly over the border from Bolivia into Peru. And this is located at Kenuani. That is the name of the little town. The name of the archaeological site usually is called Kenuani. Whether that's its original name or not, I don't know. And again, we don't know what culture created it. It's not like anything I've ever seen in terms of Inca construction, nor is it similar to any Tiwanaku culture construction. So it's one of those places that we'll have to visit many, many more times in order to try to ascertain what it was. Most people think it uh, looks like a stadium, which it somewhat does. It faces south towards the lake and actually faces south to Tiwanaku and Puma Punku. But whether it's related to those sites is unknown. The stone material is a volcanic ash that's been compressed and solidified, so it's not a really hard material. We see plenty of tool marks on the surfaces that look very much like chisel marks, but as the Inca and other related cultures had no metal material stronger than bronze, again, it makes this place an enigma, as well as the fascinating curved staircases that you can see. And as we go in again with the little quadcopter, you see that the um, terracing or steps or stairs or seating is very even. And now you're going to get a glimpse of Lake Titicaca in the background. So here again, emphasi uh, emphasizing on the interesting staircases and this strange outcropping there, whether the outcropping is simply natural or has been altered with, by human hands or others, I'll have to go back and see many, many times.